In this problem, we have a cat standing on a platform that's attached with a rope to pulley D. Pulley D is rigidly attached to gear C, which meshes with gear B, and gear B is attached rigidly to handle A. A constant angular acceleration of 5 radians per second squared in the positive k hat direction is applied at A, and we're asked to determine the velocity and the distance traveled after 5 seconds. This is at the cat. Um, we're also given all of the dimensions. And that's for part A. Part B, um, we're given the maximum linear acceleration the cat can sustain before getting sick. And we need to figure out what is the maximum angular acceleration applied at the handle to reach that 3, meter, three meters per second squared upwards. Okay, so we're going to start with a diagram. So the diagram is going to involve the two rigid bodies. Uh, The coordinate system will be drawn as follows. x to the right is positive, y is positive upwards, and our rotation counterclockwise is positive. So again, what we're given is the angular acceleration in the negative k-hat direction. Um, this is alpha, uh, and we're given the dimensions of these um, gears. Uh, we are asked to find the linear or acceleration at this point over here. So this is going to be called point C for the cat. And this, uh, the point where these two gears mesh, it's going to be called point P. So if we go back to our diagram over here, this here um, is going to be point P. This is where the two gears mesh. This here is going to be point C for the cat. Um, so what we know is that at this point P here, the tangential acceleration and velocity is equal for both gear B and gear C. Uh, and so we're going to use that relationship to then um, find really alpha from the left uh, from the left rigid body AB to the right body CD. Uh, so we know that that angular acceleration will produce an acceleration, a tangential acceleration downwards, um, which is going to be equal um, between the two gears because that point shares the same acceleration. And this is only tangential acceleration, not uh, radial. We're going to call this A at point P and it's going to have the same magnitude and the same direction. And then from this, we can then figure out the angular acceleration of the um, second rigid body. Um, so again, this rigid body is going to be called AB. This is going to be called DC. And the center point that we're going to, about which these both rotate, is going to be called a, B for this point, and C, D for the right body. Um, and we're going to use those later, that naming convention later. Um, but essentially what we're doing is we have this alpha with which we can find the tangential acceleration at point P. This is going to be shared between the two bodies, so this uh, is going to be have the same magnitude and direction. From this acceleration, uh, linear acceleration at point P, um, we can determine alpha for the um, body to the right, and then with this angular acceleration, we can determine the, the linear acceleration of the cat, so at point C. Um, so let's uh, draw in what we're given um, to simplify, because we are given some diameters instead of radii, so I'm going to rewrite everything down here.
All right, moving on, we're going to talk about some assumptions with um, our solution. So we need to assume that, first of all, AB and BC are both rigid bodies. So AB and CD are rigid. And this will imply that alpha A is going to be equal to alpha B. And this also implies that alpha C is equal to alpha D. And this is also uh, true for the um, angular velocities, not just the angular accelerations. Um, but then there's also another assumption, and that is that everything starts from rest. And this implies that um, d naught and v naught are equal to zero. Um, and this, so that means the initial displacement is zero, and then the initial velocity is zero. Um, so moving away from the assumptions, we're going to move into the solution. So the main formula that we're going to use here is the formula of relating linear acceleration to uh, tangential acceleration, which is that linear acceleration A is equal to uh, alpha, the angular acceleration, cross product to, the, uh, to a radius, so a distance. Um, and this distance is going to be um, the distance between uh, the instantaneous center of uh, zero velocity, so the point by, uh, around about which um, the uh, whole gear is spinning. So this in our case will be the center of the gear. Uh, and um, alpha again is the angular acceleration and this will yield the tangential acceleration. So again this A here will be tangential. Uh, so we're going to apply that at, on the first gear here and so what's gonna, what we're going to try and find is find this acceleration that points downwards that we called uh, AP. Uh, and this is again a linear acceleration at point P that is shared between the two rigid bodies. So we have that uh, AP is equal to alpha of A cross product to R of P with respect to AB. So these are the three vectors, so I can draw them into my diagram. The radius, again, is going to be the radius of P with respect to AB. So it's going to point in this direction here. So it's going to be in the positive x direction. This is R of P with respect to AB. Um, and we have the direction of alpha is given. So we can just plug everything into the equation and solve for AP. Uh, so this is going to be equal to negative 5 radians per second squared in the k hat direction, cross product to 0 0.3 in the i hat direction. This is the positive radius pointing towards the right um, along in the x direction. And if we solve this cross product, we get negative 1.5 meters per second squared in the j hat direction. So again, confirms that this does indeed point downwards uh, along the uh, negative j direction. Same thing over here, as expected. Um, then we're going to have, now we have solved for AP. And we know AP in the body to the right, so body CD. So with this AP, we can use the same formula um, and solve for alpha instead of linear accelerations. We solve for angular acceleration. In this case, we have to note that the radius is going to be the radius of um, CD, P with respect to CD. So it's going to point in the negative J hat direction. So R of P with respect to CD. Um, so it's going to be negative. Um, but again, same exact formula and same exact application. So acceleration at P, which we have, is going to be equal to alpha of C um, cross product to R of P with respect to CD. And this is going to be equal to, um, we have AP, this is negative 1.5 meters per second squared in the j hat direction equals to the right side which is going to be um, negative well alpha c in the k hat direction uh, cross product to negative 
0 0.8 in the i hat direction. Um, and again, this is negative because the radius is pointing towards the left. Um, this here, I've assumed a direction. So I've assumed alpha c is positive. Um, but if I get a negative answer, then this would be in the negative k hat direction. Um, so again, I haven't, as I've assumed a direction, um, but um, I've assumed a direction, but I, didn't, I haven't picked if it's either positive or negative, but it has to be in the k hat direction because it's spinning about around in the x, y plane. So it's spinning about the z axis. Um, so again, we can solve this. Um, we can, uh, there's one unknown, which is just alpha c, um, and we have all of the directions. So uh, j, this is k i, um, so um, clockwise, negative, uh, makes it counterclockwise, but there's a negative here, so these two negatives essentially cancel out. Um, and so uh, essentially what we are doing is we're just going to divide this 1.5 by this 0 0.8. That's going to be the magnitude, and we've determined that it's positive because, again, k and i give this j, and then this negative gives this negative over here. Um, so we can essentially cancel out the, the negatives. Uh, so we can solve for... Um, alpha c, and that's going to be equal to 1.875 radians per second squared in the k hat direction. And so we have solved for, and then remember that alpha c and alpha d are equal from this equation here, and alpha a and alpha b are equal, so um, those are interchangeable. Here I wrote it as alpha c, but this is also alpha d. Um, so we have our alpha. Now we can use the same exact equation and determine the acceleration here. So the way we do that is again we apply the same exact um, equation using a different radius this time. Um, so this is radius of c with respect to cd. Again in the positive x direction um, and this is essentially the same exact application that we did um, with the formula before. Um, so a of c is going to be equal to alpha d uh, cross product to r of uh, c with respect to c d. And again, we have all we have alpha d and we have r of c with respect to d to solve for a c. Um, so this is what it boils down to: one point eight seven five radians per second squared in the k hat direction, cross product to 0 0.3 meters in the i hat direction. And this is going to be equal to 0 0.56 meters per second squared in the j hat direction. Uh, and as expected, this is positive. Um, therefore, um, as expected, that points up. Um, and this makes sense uh, since this gear here is going to be rotating with an alpha in this direction. The acceleration at P, uh, the tangential acceleration at P, at C, sorry, uh, should point up. So this is AC, um, and we have confirmed that it does indeed point up. So now that we have this acceleration, um, we can solve for um, the velocity and the displacement after a set amount of time. Um, again, this acceleration needs to be constant for this to be done. Um, but it is constant, so we can simply apply the, the following equations. So the velocity after some time is going to be equal to the initial velocity, which we said is 0, plus um, the acceleration times the time step. Um, and in this case, this essentially, this term is erased. Um, this goes to zero because we have we said it start everything starts from a resting position, so essentially the velocity is just the acceleration times the five second time, uh, and we can solve for that. So v of time equals to five seconds is going to be equal to zero point five six meters per second squared times the five seconds, which is equal to 2.81 meters per second. 
And then we have our acceleration, or our displacement, sorry, um, after a set amount of time. So the displacement, again, remember, this is the formula, d equals to the initial displacement, which for us is zero, plus the initial velocity times the time step, uh, plus a half the acceleration times the time step squared. Now in our case, again, the first one and the second one are both zero because we have we start from a displacement of zero and we start from an initial velocity of zero so we just have one half a t squared uh, so we can again solve for um, this the displacement of t is equal to five seconds is going to be equal to 0 0.5 times 0 0.56 meters per second squared times five seconds squared. And so uh, D is going to be equal to 7.03 meters. All right, and so this concludes uh, part A. Then we have part B, um, which um, essentially is the reverse problem of part A. Um, in part A, we had a, we're given an angular acceleration at the handle, and we're in, asked to find the linear acceleration at C. Uh, whereas in part B, we're given a maximum acceleration, linear acceleration at C at the cat, and we need to find the angular acceleration that corresponds at the handle. So again, it's the same exact problem, uh, just backwards. So we're given that T uh, of the cat is going to be equal to a maximum of 3 meters per second squared in the positive j-hat direction, so upwards. And this is the maximum, so this is what we're going to be analyzing because we want to figure out what the maximum acceleration of the handle is, not in between. Um, so we can, again, solve, use this equation uh, here, just backwards, uh, because in this case we're going to, we have this radius and we have this AC so that we can solve for alpha d. Uh, so let's do that. AC is equal to alpha D cross product to RC with respect to CD. Um, so this is going to be, this is going to have the following equation. Uh, 3 meters per second squared in the J hat direction is going to be equal to alpha D in the K hat direction cross product to 0 0.3 meters in the i hat direction because that radius points to the right. And so um, again, same thing as before, um, k and i um, leads to j. This is positive, these two are both positive, so alpha d is also going to be positive. And um, so to solve for this alpha d, we're essentially 3 divided by 0 0.3. And we get that it is 10. So alpha d is going to be equal to 10 radians per second squared, sorry. Uh, and this is in the positive k hat direction. So it's going to rotate counterclockwise as expected. Uh, then we have. Uh, so now we've solved for the angular acceleration uh, of uh, this block here. So this is going to be uh, alpha CD, which is equal to alpha C, which is equal to alpha D. Um, and now we can solve for this uh, acceleration at point P, again with the same exact formula that we used before. Uh, so let's write that down. Uh, acceleration, linear acceleration at point P is going to be equal to alpha d cross product to radius of P with respect to CD, so the center of C and center of D. Um, and again, we can solve, we can plug in everything because we have this radius and we have alpha, which we have just found over here, and we can solve for AP. Um, and um, then with this 
uh, acceleration value here. We can plug it into the right side, into the, in this system here, same exact formula, but using uh, the other side now. Um, so we have having this acceleration and having this radius, and we can solve for alpha at a, which is the handle accelerate angular acceleration. So let's solve for that. So that gives us that answer. Negative eight in the J hat direction, which is AP here, um, is going to be equal to uh, our angular acceleration of a which is alpha a in the k hat direction uh, cross product to r of p with respect to a b uh, which is 0 0.3 in the i hat direction so we can solve for again alpha a just with the same method as we did before here we see that there's a negative sign here so this alpha a will have to be negative because k and i give positive j um, so this negative must come from this alpha a. Um, so again, we divide, we do eight divided by zero point three, and we get uh, twenty. And that alpha a is going to be equal to negative uh, twenty six point six six radians per second squared in the k hat direction. And so this indeed is our final maximum angular acceleration of uh, the handle A. Um, so since uh, in part A we said that um, we were applying 5 radians per second, uh, since uh, this is bigger than 5 radians per second, um, the cat won't feel sick with the acceleration from part A. Okay.